welcome back. I'm so happy to be here. Let's just pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to speak and teach your people. Um, I ask that your Holy Spirit just speak through me, Lord God. Um, give me um, the words that you want me to speak. Give me the unction, Lord God, to speak on your behalf, Father. Um, help the people who are designed to hear this word be teachable and have an open heart, Lord God, to hear your voice, Lord Jesus. Um, I thank you that you have just anointed this entire YouTube channel, anointed this um, this video, Lord God, and um, the instruction that you have given me to go forth, um, I'm obedient to. I thank you. All glory be um, to you, Lord God. And I just ask that you just guard my mouth, guard my eyes, help me to speak only those things that you um, have given me to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Just, okay, so this word in this video is about spiritual warfare and it's about intercession okay so intercession is the act of interceding for someone interceding is spiritually it is praying for someone or standing in the gap for someone okay and so what he has been having me do specifically is prophetically intercede okay and we know prophecy is hearing the voice of god and so what i have been doing is hearing the voice of god hearing what he wants me to say or pray for them and being able to pray on their behalf or petition him on their behalf okay so there's a few scriptures okay now yeah he says not yet <laughs> there's a few scriptures that we will read but um as as he leads me to we'll read those so where you want me to start lord okay 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 so he wants me to tell my experience so i have a lot of experience with spiritual warfare um if you guys have um seen my oldest testimony i think it's the first video on this page my testimony from then um just up until a lot of my videos have been dealing with um spiritual warfare or just the things that God has been teaching me about about spiritual warfare in general. What he wants you guys to know is that as he's pouring out his spirit and as we can expect more of a prophetic anointing, more of an ear to hear him, more spiritual eyes to see him, more dreams and visions that he's going to give that are going to have um, interpretation and explanation and clarity and revelation. As he's giving those things, he is also putting people into place that will be prophetic intercessors. So I knew that I could pray for people. I knew that I had a specific grace for praying for people, but I did not know that I was an intercessor. It was just like, you know, God, I'm like I pray for people, you know what I'm saying? I can get a prayer through, like I can get a prayer through, but no, there is a specific grace in this season for people who intercede on other people's behalf. And so um, if he's been pulling pulling you to this or if um, you've experienced this, but you may have put it down so you don't pray for people as much, you kind of um, focus on praying for yourself or praying for your own deliverance or praying for, you know, a situation that you may be in. He may be... Um, kind of pulling on your heart to start praying for other people. Okay, so he wants to talk specifically about this last um, experience that I had, and then he'll go into the teaching portion about this. So a friend reached out to me and um, she needed prayer for something specific, um, something um, regarding witchcraft and spiritual warfare. And so um, she felt like there were word curses against her and her family. And this had been confirmed to her through other prophecy, through other people, all this stuff. And so, um, first of all, it is so important to hear the Lord before you respond to people. Before When people reach out and they say um, they want prayer, they want to talk to you, discern whether or not the Lord wants you to speak and when he wants you to speak and what he wants you to say, okay? So the first thing I did was go to the Lord about it, okay? So I hear what's going on and I hear that she wants me to pray. She wants me to pray, Lord, what are you saying about this? And so um, he says, wait. And so I'm like, okay, okay. I was gonna call her right then and I was gonna pray. And he said, wait. And so um, the next day comes. And I said, okay, Lord, what you want me to do about this? And this is a friend. So I told her and, and she's prophetic. So she knows it's not like I'm talking to a stranger. This is a friend. And so she knows that I hear from God. She hears from God. You know, people, we, she knows God's voice. And so I told her, the Lord told me to wait 
before I respond and wait before I pray about this. So we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. But he's telling me to wait at the moment. So she's like, okay, yeah, no problem. Let me know what he said. Da, da, da. And so he finally tells me um, after two days to talk to my friend. So I have a friend named Taylor. She is my accountability partner. She, child, she didn't turn into my best friend really, but she's my accountability partner, my prayer partner. We, um, we're in similar seasons in our life and our walk and God brought her into my life. And so we have just been like tag teaming and partnering in this, this journey with Christ. And so, um, and it's so important. It is so important. That is something that the Lord had been um, dealing with me on for the longest is getting with community and getting into a community. And so um, I'm in therapy right now, Christian therapy. I have her as my accountability partner and we talk every day, pray every day, pray for the same things every day. And then um, I also have um, started going to a church home. And so it's so important that you are connected with community because it's easiest for the enemy to um, get to you when you're in isolation and God has not called you to isolation. There are seasons of isolation that God may call you to and you will feel in your heart and know in your spirit that God has called you to that season. And even then, there will still be some sort of community that he has attached you to, um, like a church or a family friend or or, or, so, or a minister or, or somebody that he's attached to you to um, offer you encouragement and just edify you. But God doesn't take you into a place of isolation where you're feeling lonely or alone or you're distancing yourself or disassociating. That's gonna be something of the enemy. That's a big part of, of your journey and in your walk is just making sure that you're a part of community. So pray for that if you haven't. The Lord told me to reach out to my friend Taylor and tell her about the situation. Now, mind you, she has not met my friend and she does not know my friend from a can of paint. So there was no way that she could have known what the Lord was trying to say unless she heard from the Lord. And so she said, um, so I'm just telling her and I said, you know, the Lord told me to bring this to you because I know that, you know, we can partner together and we can pray about this. But, um, you know, so we were just talking about this. We were just talking about it. And so we were both hearing things from the Lord about what needed to be said, what needed to be, um, um, you know, prayed over. And so the Lord was giving specific things to her for me to write down about what needs to be prayed over regarding my friend. And so, um, wow, wow, thank you, Lord. Okay, so what he's saying right now is that um, the reason that that occurred is because sometimes we can have a bias. Sometimes we can have, um, when you know someone, and the Lord has told you to pray for that person. Sometimes because you know them, you may think that you know what to pray for, or you may think that you have seen um, what the, what what it is that he wants to place on your heart or, you know, or I've seen them deal with this, or I think that she needs this or, or whatever. And so we may go into our own minds and try to um, just pray out of our own minds, pray out of our own intellect. And so with prophetic prayer, there will be things that you would have not known about this person or things that um, the enemy has tried to implant or um, infiltrate into their lives that you literally would not have known otherwise, um, um, other than him letting you know, other than the, than, uh, the Holy Spirit letting you know. And so um, that's why it was important for me to partner with Taylor on this. And that's why he told me to wait. And so she's telling me all these things. She's like, um, so I'm hearing this, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing this. And so I'm writing these things down. And then she said, so I'm hearing the Lord say that you need to fast from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. on this situation. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna do it. And she was like, and he's telling me to do it too. So I'm gonna do it too. And I'm gonna come into agreement with you on this. I told my friend, this is what the Lord said and I'm gonna be obedient to it. And then we'll, we will pray on this situation, on this word curse situation, this witchcraft situation, the things that you're, you've are you been feeling and experiencing, we will pray on this as he instructs us after this fast. And so she was in agreement with it. And so um, now that's three people in agreement with this. And um, so the next day, um, the Lord wakes me up at 444. I look at my phone, he wakes me up at 444. This is another thing that he has been highlighting when it has been coming to um, interceding prophetically. He has been giving me specific numbers. Um, he'll wake me up at a specific time. Um, last night I was praying for someone in particular and he told me before I started praying, he said, look at your phone and it was 1212. 
you have to be very careful because you do not want to get into a place where you are um, looking for these signs as uh, your only confirmation or looking for um, these numbers to speak to you. And um, that is a way that the enemy can use um, just witchcraft or angel numbers, if you will, to, to infiltrate what the Holy Spirit is trying to say prophetically. And so, yes, God does use numbers to confirm things. Yes, he does use certain times to confirm things, but the enemy will try to, um, to, uh, get you to a place where you are dependent on these things and not dependent on the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit should give you the unction to look for certain signs or, or you'll feel in your spirit, whether or not it's him or it's just you looking for different numbers or different signs. Cause I've been there too and been deceived um, into new age thinking that numerology and looking at numbers mean certain things. I'm looking up numbers and all those things and, and it's not necessary. Um, something that the Holy Spirit will do is give you a confirmation through um, his word to a lot of times he'll give me, um, I'll see a, a time and he'll tell me, okay, now go to James four and four, or he'll tell me, you know, uh, specific scriptures that line up with those numbers. So just be mindful that you're not worshiping um, or idolizing the signs that come through numbers. What he had me do is um, he woke me up at 444. And so I looked at my phone and I was like, okay, so can I go back to sleep? And he was like, yeah, no worries, sleep. So I go back to sleep, but I was aware at this point, my spirit was open and aware to know that um, he was trying to speak to me. And so, you know, I'm sleepy, but he wakes me up at 5.01. My eyes open at 5.01. I said, okay, you told me that I'm going to fast from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. You woke me up at this time. So that means you want me to pray right now. And so I go into um, this area. This is now, it's just my living room and it's just my couch, but it, it has been um, my new safe haven. And that's something that I'm learning in my, um, in my therapy and in my Christian coaching is just to have a place where God and I meet. And so it's been this area. And so um, this is where I came. I have my little blanket. I have my, um, did I have my journal? Nope, I didn't have my journal, I had my phone because that's where I had written out all of the things that Taylor said the Lord wanted me to pray for. And so, um, yes, I, I had written all these things out and so I just started praying. Um, and so I started casting down those things that were written. It was things like denial and fear of rejection and hurt and security. There were a lot of things on there that um, the Lord wanted me to call out um, so that these places could be healed um, and, and that my friend could be delivered and set free from, um, any open doors that these spirits may have attached to. And so I'm praying for her. And then that was it. He allowed me to go back to sleep. And so, um, I actually, I went out of town. So I went to go visit my grandma. So I was on a flight during the time that I was supposed to fast. And so, um, God was just so gracious. He allowed me to, to, um, uh, just sleep and rest and, all of these times where I could have been like craving something to eat or trying to break the fast, he allowed me to rest. And so when I got to my grandma's house, she was like, you want to go to sleep? And I was like, yes, let me just rest or whatever. So I went to sleep and um, he woke me up again. It wasn't a specific time this time. And that's what I'm saying is that every time won't be, you can't worship signs or worship confirmation to where now you're looking like, is he telling me to pray at this time? Is he telling me to pray at that time? Uh, for, for these past couple of weeks, he literally has been with me, but not every single time has been like, you know, it's just been the, the discerning of his voice. And he woke me up and told me, okay, it's time to pray for her again. And so this time when I prayed, he led me to thank him for breaking the, um, the, the, uh, ties that the spirit had had on her before. So all of the things that I had written down about, uh, what I was praying for and breaking in the spirit. He now had me, uh, my prayer turned to now thanking him for doing those things in her life. And then also remember my friend Taylor was also praying um, this time at this time as well. So I'll text her like, hey, I'm about to pray for my friend. Do you mind joining me in uh, praying for her as well? And she was like, yep, yeah, I got you. We, we both praying. So now we're both praying. So that's two together in agreement praying. And so I called my friend, told her what he had told me to pray for and all of these things, how the fast went and everything. 
And then he told me to pray for her again. And so while I was on the phone, I was praying for her. But this time, this was a prophetic prayer. This was a prayer where I was speaking um, about the things that were going to come to pass in her life, the promises that were going to be fulfilled in her life, what the Lord had spoken over her, what open doors were needing to be closed, what um, just edifying her in the spirit, just edifying her. And I did not expect that. I expected to pray against the same spirits that I had prayed for in the beginning and thanking God. I, I expected to do that, but he literally led me to a place of, um, of prophetic prayer for her where I was edifying her in the spirit. And after I got done, she was like, that was so much confirmation. So many things you said I haven't even talked about in years. These are things before uh, my husband came along. These are, I can't believe this, 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 this. And it was all the Holy Spirit. So that is the experience that he wanted me to share. Um, and so with that, he wants me to talk about spiritual warfare. And he wants me to talk about intercession. So Proverbs 18.21 it says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So life and death are in the power of the tongue, meaning what you speak is either life or it's death, whatever comes from your mouth. And you have the power to manifest that through what you speak. Okay, that's what you will see in your life, through what you speak. And then it says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you love to speak, you will eat the words that you say, holy or unholy. Whatever you 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 like to say or love to say, those are the things that you will, that's the, that's the fruit that you will eat or the things that you will partake or the things that you will see in your life, whatever you come into agreement with, right? This is how it's relating it to spiritual warfare. What you speak has to be able to cancel or counteract that that has been spoken over you by spirits or by the enemy or by people who have cursed you with their words, okay? So spiritual warfare has nothing to do with flesh and blood. It has nothing to do with us fighting. Thoughts and speech have to do with the spiritual realm. So what I'm saying is when you pray, you have to be very strategic about what you say. OK, it can't just be Lord, heal me. It has to be Lord, heal me from this specific spirit of infirmity that comes to destroy this, this, that or whatever. You have to speak against the assignment of the demon. OK, so jealousy, the spirit of jealousy comes to sow seeds of discord. It comes to cause um um, disagreements. It comes to cause um, a selfish nature. It comes to cause um, um, covenants and um, connections to fall apart and to, dis to disintegrate. It comes to bring manipulation. So you have to speak against the spirit of jealousy. Lord, I come against the spirit of jealousy because it tries to come against my destiny by causing seeds of discord within my family. I know that people have been operating with this spirit, but we break every tie that this spirit has attached to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. Okay? So it can't just be, Lord, stop jealousy. That's not enough. That's not enough. It It is enough to open up um, the door to, to healing. It is enough for God to... Um, to start an activation process of healing and deliverance, but he wants us to be strategic with our warfare prayers because the enemy is strategic with his, okay? He's very strategic with um, the things that he speaks over you. He's very strategic with when he tries to speak over you. He's very, he's very strategic when um, he tries to bring in certain people into your life. He knows the patterns and the behaviors that you have dealt with in the past regarding sin. He knows that your, your hiccups or your little ticks, or he knows the things to kind of get under your skin. You have to know how to combat those things with the word of God. Okay. So I use this, um, I use this, um, what is it called? I use this example a lot where the enemy will come and say, you're ugly. And so you can say, I'm not ugly. Then the enemy will come and say, well, you're worthless. You can say, I'm not worthless. 
And what will happen is you will begin to hear him speak and speak and speak. And so depression is where he is speaking so heavily. You are coming into agreement with what he's speaking and you're not saying anything back. You are now weighed down by the lies of the enemy and do not have any fight or any spiritual uh, get up within you to get back at the enemy. Anxiety is when you are going back and forth with him in your mind. No, I'm not ugly. He's uh, Yes, you are ugly. No, I'm not. Well, you're worthless. No, I'm not. I'm, but you have not casted those thoughts down by replacing them with what the word of God says about you. So you cannot just say, no, I'm not this. Well, what are you? What are you then? If you're fearfully and wonderfully made because that's what the word says about you, then you have replaced that thought with what the word says about you and what the truth is. You have to replace the lies of the enemy with the truth. That's how they are canceled out. The word of God is the sword. It's the sword in the spirit. So that's what cancels out those thoughts and those patterns. Okay. When it comes to um, spiritual warfare, you want to be strategic with your prayers. The way that you are strategic with your prayers is by two things. One, prophetically, the Lord will give you what to, what to speak and what to pray over. He'll give you, as you open your spiritual ears to hear him, as you are walking in obedience. It's very important to walk in obedience. You cannot hear the Lord clearly when you don't walk in obedience. When you are walking in obedience, when you have your spiritual ears tuned into him, when you are seeking him, you will hear him clearly and he will give you exactly what to pray for. And then by the time you get done praying, you won't even have known that you was praying for the things you was praying for. You'd be like, I don't even know why he told me to pray for that or why he told me to say that, but it came up and I'm, I'm just being obedient. So that's prophetic praying, but also another another strategy is to pray strategically by writing things down. So it's still prophetic. He'll still speak to you about what you need to write down, but you can also do this by um, what you have seen, what you have experienced, something that um, you know needs to come out of a person, something that um, you know needs to, uh, a healing that needs to be um, brought to this area of your life. There are things that you can write down specifically. So like discipline in finances, discipline in health, um, um, low self-esteem or perversion or pornography addiction. All of these things you can write down. And then as you pray, you are calling these specific things forward. So it's not just, Lord, help me to be a better person. Lord, help me. I just, I keep falling short. God, just help me. Oh, Lord, just, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I thank you, Lord, that you are giving now um, your people a divine, a divine, a divine spiritual gift to be able to hear you and an anointing to be able to pray strategically against the warfare of the enemy. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down the specifics. OK, once you have the specifics. One, it keeps you accountable to those things. So you can repeat those things as many times as he instructs you to repeat. You can pray over those things as many times as he instructs you to pray. You can keep those things ingrained in your mind so that you know this is not a part of me. This he's telling me to pray for. This needs to be healed or delivered from in, in my family. This got to come out of my bloodline. OK, and he will give you more instruction and revelation on that thing. Where did it come from? How do we get it out? What what um, assignment does it have attached to to whatever? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. There's too many spirits that are running rampant within the church, within our communities, within our families. There are too many spirits that are running, running rampant because not only are we gossiping, about what we're seeing say say there's somebody who's dealing with with lust okay and they sleep with everybody oh she's such a this and she's such a that and she need to do you want to see her delivered because what you are if life and death are in the power of the tongue what you're doing is speaking death over her what you're doing is coming into agreement with what the enemy has said about her that she'll never be this and she'll never stop this and she's always going to be this uh-uh mm-mm mm-mm so what you need to do is pray for that person who's dealing with lust. 
you pray for that person that not only are they delivered from the spirit of lust, you have to say that, delivered from the spirit of lust, not just that they stop sleeping around. This is a spirit. Call that spirit out. That they are delivered from the spirit of lust. What is lust assigned to in their life? What are the exact assignments or schemes or strategies of lust in their life? What has lust been causing them to lose out on? What has lust been causing them to go after? What has lust been cause, causing in their lives? What havoc or, or discord or, or, um, or just uh, what, what are the things that, have, that lust has been causing in their lives that keep them out of the will or out of the alignment of God? Call those things out. Lust comes to pervert their image of sex and marriage. Lust comes to keep them in a place of um, idolizing women or idolizing men. Lust comes to keep them in a place of um, stagnancy when it comes to relationships. Lust keeps them in a place of adultery. Lust, you have come to keep them in a place of uh, a pornography addiction. And we rebuke you and we rebuke every scheme and assignment that you have been given in the name of Jesus. And so the more specific and strategized your prayers are against what the enemy has spoken or what, or what the enemy is trying to say, the more effective they are, the more effective they are. Okay. The enemy is not afraid of weak prayers. And the reason he's not afraid of weak prayers is because it's not just the power that's attached to what you say. You can say it all you, you can scream it all you, Lord, this help me. You can scream that all you want. It's, it's the words. And that's why speaking and praying the word of God over your life is so important. You have to know what the word says, have scriptures. After you have written down everything that it is that um, the spirit, after you've written down what the spirits are and after you've written what they come to do, now you have scripture to go against what they, what they are schemed to do. Lord, you have fortified me through your spirit Whatever scripture he may lead you to uh, to attach to that, okay? That's what you pray. You pray his scriptures. There is a book that is called Prayers That Rout Demons. It's a really good book. It is a book full of prayers, a book full of um, strategic prayers that are all centered around scripture. The scriptures are noted. And so um, I remember being in my room literally just praying these prayers out loud. I am the righteousness of God and no weapon formed against me, against me shall prosper. And da -da 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 -da. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. Just praying these prayers out and literally the atmosphere shifts because you are now speaking uh, something that, if you think about contracts or covenants, these things exist in the spiritual realm. There are contracts that exist in the spiritual realm. And so you uh, coming into agreement with them or signing those contracts through your, your life and the way you live and the way you speak and what you ha are, have been obedient to and what you've been listening to and doing and all your life. That's why it's so important for you to live a life of, of repentance, live a life of holiness, live a life that is pleasing to God because what you come into agreement with, with your life is another version of... Um, of 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 covenant it's another version of, of contracts okay so you can't speak against pornography and perversion but then also watch pornography at the same time you see what i'm saying so it's a twofold thing so god is 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 talking about the spiritual warfare piece of it but he is also talking about the natural piece of it as well you can already be delivered in the spiritual and still have the residue of the behavior. But if you continue with the behavior, when you keep operating in the behavior, you are now opening up yourself to more spiritual warfare. You're opening up yourself to the demon still having some sort of power or some sort of open door to still come, foothold and still come and try to manipulate what, what you have spoken in the spirit, okay? When it comes to intercession, intercession. So um, intercession is interceding on the behalf of someone else, okay? I'm gonna tell you about the vision that he gave me when it came to intercession. He showed me um, like a person, your spirit, okay? And you have a shield up. And the shield is the word of God, 
okay and so it's it's a like it's a long shield and it, it protects you and you have demons all around you that are trying to fight you okay and so you have this shield and so you're speaking against this specific spirit and so you're holding the shield against them then you're speaking against this specific spirit and you're holding the word of god this shield against them and so now you are holding the shield up but when two are gathered together, so Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? Matthew 18, 19, uh, uh, 19 through 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so he showed me an image of two people with, with shields. Both of them had shields, they're back to back. And now they're able to, um, to help each other, shield from these demonic entities and then he showed me the last vision of the of jesus being in the midst of those uh people with the shield and then there was no more demonic warfare there were no more um devils that were able to get at them or to to fight them and so what he is trying to express with that is the power of intercession the power of agreement in the spirit with another person. The power of agreement in the spirit with another person. And so when you are both on one accord about what God is saying, when you are both on one accord about what to pray for, you're praying for the same things, you're fasting at the same time, there is a deeper um, spiritual revelation that happens. There's a deeper spiritual anointing and um yokes are destroyed more easily healing becomes more easy and more accelerated um the things that you've been praying for um you're able to see the manifestation of them faster because two people together is like double the the, the spiritual warfare it's, it's like double the strength so um it's important that we are interceding for other people it's important that we are coming into agreement with what the Lord has spoken over certain people. And so someone may be praying for themselves, but if you pair with them and you are praying with them, um, a lot of times you will see a stronger or a faster move of God, just because there is not um, a, a lot of warfare or there is not a lot of penetrable warfare that's able to get through those shields because we've come into agreement and we're both speaking the word of God. And so um, it's also so it's, it's a heaviness and it's an importance to pray for other people because you never know how your prayers could change things. You never know um, you speaking life into a situation that previously looked dead. Everyone around this person was speaking death over the situation. Everyone around this person has um, counted them out or or there is no one praying for this person. This, praying is not even, this person is not even praying for themselves. You standing in the gap could be the difference between life or death in this person's life you standing in the gap and coming into agreement with what the lord has spoken not what the enemy has spoken but what the lord has spoken not what you see but what the lord has spoken not the behavior of the person not the spirit working behind the person but what the lord has said you may see people who have not been saved for 25 years, but the Lord told you that that person is going to be saved. You come into agreement with that and you pray that over them. You don't come into agreement with, with what the enemy has said or what the enemy has spoken. And so um, intercession is one of those things that God is really bringing to the forefront. There will be there will be powerful, powerful intercessors. And we need to be interceding on the world's behalf at this point. On the world's behalf, there is judgment coming. And he wants us to intercede for those who have another chance to be able to come to Christ. Intercede for those who have another chance to be able to hear from him. He wanted me to read um, these two scriptures as well. James 4 and 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And so what he's saying there is you, those of you who do not know God, those of you ha who have decided to live um, a lifestyle of rebellion, live a lifestyle of disobedience, live a lifestyle in the absence of God and his presence, um, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming, and this is not to scare, uh, but it is to warn. 
it is to warn. It absolutely is to warn. He has been so gracious to give us this time to pray for those who are still um, dealing with things that they don't want to let go of, to pray for those who are still um, in a place where they are unsure about whether or not, you know, Jesus is the truth and, and, and the, the true living God. He is. He is. And it's so much better to give your life to um, what you may not even be sure about when it comes to God than to literally be, um, you know, sent to a place of total damnation because you just didn't even want to try. You just didn't even want to try. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just take a little taste of Jesus. Just take a little taste of Jesus. And I, I, I promise you, you will be totally captivated by his love. It has nothing to do with religion. I'm not telling you just go to church. I'm not telling you just um, start doing this or doing that in, in the ways of religion. I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you is to give Jesus a try. Give Jesus a try. Open the word of God and allow his Holy Spirit to speak to you. This is 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 8. And um, this is just talking about the people who are righteous. And so it says, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord um, Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he is calling those who are um, his people to a season of rest and a season of harvest and a season of abundance and a season of just so much joy, so much peace. That's where he's calling us. And he's calling um, those who do not know him, those who do not want to give um, their heart over to him. He's calling them into a place of judgment. And um, we're seeing it. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing, we're already seeing it. And um, it's not anything to be taken lightly. It's not anything to, to, to just bat an eye about. You know, if you are an intercessor, you should be interceding on the world's behalf. You should be interceding for those who still have um, time to come to God. His arms are still open. His arms are open. And he is giving us an opportunity to be able to pray for those family members and friends and people who may not have um, even heard about him, people that he wants you to evangelize to or speak to about who God is. He's giving us an opportunity to do those things. And so I would just encourage you to be obedient, to pray for them and to also just be discerning to his voice. If he tells you to reach out to someone, if he tells you to pray for someone, if he tells you to speak to someone, a stranger and ask them if they know about Jesus, do it. Their life could be depending on it. And so, um, that's all. That's all. Um, he loves y'all. He really does. He loves all of us. And he will be revealing more. He has been revealing more. There's a lot more that I have to make videos about. There's a lot more that he has been sharing with me and um, teaching me and just exposing me to. And so, um, expect more videos. I love y'all. Stay blessed.